Hey, welcome back, y'all. Today we're talking about functions. What is a function? What does it do? And how awesome is it? Ah, ah. Okay, so I'm gonna use a metaphor that is actually kind of ridiculous and silly, but hopefully it'll help you understand what a function is. So a function is like a microwave. Yeah, totally. So think about a microwave. It is a box and you put food into it and then you give it instructions, popcorn mode, um, 50 seconds, 99 seconds at 30% power, all sorts of options you can give it. And then once you put your food in and once you give it your instructions, you hit start and then it does its thing. And then at the end, it gives you a result. Now, in this case, the result is super simple, warm food, hopefully. Uh, our functions are exactly like that. What they are is they are a box, metaphorically speaking, that you provide it your food, which in this case is your data set, and then you give it instructions, or we might say we give it arguments, and then it does some stuff in the background, and then gives us our result, our warm food, huh? or our analysis. That was kind of a dumb metaphor, but hey, maybe it helped. So let's go ahead and turn to R, and I'm gonna introduce you to five functions. Maybe I'll think of more as I go along. And yeah, so the first function we're gonna talk about is the concatenate function, then the mean function, then the median function, then the standard deviation function, and the plot function. And last time I hinted at the idea of objects. So let's say we wanted to create an object called Dustin's, well, R doesn't like apostrophes, so I'm not gonna put an apostrophe there, but I'll say Dustin's.wait. And what I want to do is create an option or a object that contains numbers of my weight. And just a little background about, you don't need to know this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. About 10 years ago, my wife and I were um, about to go to bed and um, I was about 210 at the time. Oh, there's our first number. Two, one, zero. It's about 210 pounds at the time. And I was always skinny growing up, like super skinny, like embarrassingly skinny. And uh, I was kind of getting proud of my fat. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a big guy now. And my wife and I were talking about that. And she's like, um, how do I say this kindly? I probably can't. So I'm just going to say it bluntly. She said, I find you less attractive with that weight. And I was like, okay, weight's going. So progressively over the last 10 years, I have lost 40 pounds. Does that matter? No. Anyway, so 210, 10 years ago, and let's say 200, six months after that, and then 195, 190, 185, and let's say these are measured in... Well, let's just say it's one year increments. 185, I hovered at 185 for a while, it went down to 180, and then went down to 175, 175, and I'm about 170 right now. Okay, so that is an object called Dustin's weight that contains these values. So now let's talk about the concatenate function. So concatenate, or C, is basically a way to put a bunch of numbers together into one object. So this object happens to be called Dustin's weight. And so now if I point my cursor, if I, or if I click on that line and hit command enter, notice it sends that information down over to the left as it always does. And now we can say Dustin's.weight and then run that and look what it does. It shows us what we call a vector, which is just a collection of numbers. It says Dustin's weight, and then it gives me the values of Dustin's weight. So in summary, so far we've created an object called Dustin's weight 
using the concatenate function and the concatenate function just puts a bunch of numbers into a single object. And now that we have an object called Dustin's weight, we can compute the mean on it. So we might say mean Dustin's dot weight. And that tells us that my average over the last 10 months is 186 or 10 years is 186.5. We could also compute the median. So again, here's our microwave, Dustin's dot weight. So this, micro, this uh, model of microwave is called the median, and we are going to give it our food, or our object called Dustin's weight, and it also, like down here, it has an argument for na.rm, which we'll talk about eventually. Um, there are lots of options that it we can give it, uh, but we're just going to take all the default options. It's as if you close the microwave and just pushed the one minute button or whatever. So that defaults to giving me the median, which is 185. We can also take this microwave, standard deviation microwave, Dustin's dot weight, compute that. And the standard deviation of my weight is 12.48. And then we could also plot, but we're going to run into, well, actually, I don't know if we're going to run into problems, but we're going to see what happens. Dustin's.weight. And, oh, look at that. It actually didn't have any problems. So normally, with the plot microwave, if you look down here, it asks for an X and a Y. I'm just giving it a Y, and it's kind of taking a guess at what I want for the X. So let's say that I am not satisfied with just saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and instead I want to give it years, okay? And so I'm gonna create a new object. Maybe I'll put it up here just to make things easier for my brain to wrap its head, my brain to wrap its head around this. So I will say year is equal to, let's say 10 years ago was 2008, 2008, oh, here's another way we could do things. 2008 through 2012, let's see. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, okay. So 2017, that's another way. If you have a sequence of numbers that happen to be in order, like the years, you can do it like that. 2008 colon 2017, which is going to give me a collection of numbers, or in our lingo, a vector called year that contains the values 2008 through 2017. And so now I can go down to the plot function and I'm going to add a little more information into this microwave. I'm not just gonna put, push the one minute button, I'm also gonna push the microwave button, which, or no, the microwave button, the, the popcorn button. So this is popcorn here. So year on our X and then Dustin's weight on our Y. And now it's going to look very similar to the plot that we already have, except it's going to replace these numbers with the years. Look at that, folks. And also by default, it gave put year down here and Dustin's dot weight up here. Now here's just to show you different arguments or different buttons you could push on your microwave. You could say a X lab or X label equals year. Let's say we want to capitalize it. And then Y lab is equal to Dustin's weight over time. Any guesses what that's gonna do? Oh yeah, we are getting a beautiful plot now. Now another thing we could do, if I could remember how to do this on the, off the top of my head, we could type line, oh, you know what? I don't remember, and this is a good situation to show you where you can get some help. So any function in R has documentation that shows you what the arguments are, gives a little more information, and gives you examples. And so to access those, all you have to do is type question mark and then the name of the function. So in this case, plot. So, and it turns out that there are, um, you won't run into this problem because you haven't installed the Pfeiffer package yet, but um, sometimes uh, different uh, packages in R, which again we'll talk about, use the same function name, and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna click on the first one. Anyway, I'll explain more what that means. 
So uh, now it says, so up here it gives just a general description of it. It shows you the arguments that are required and then down here it gives a little more detail. So X it says the coordinates of the points in the plot. Alternatively, a single plotting structure, blah, 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 blah. Uh, y, it tells you what it's expecting and then dot, dot, dot. We'll talk about that later. And then it also gives you a bunch of different arguments that it actually doesn't list up here. And what I was looking for just now is type. I couldn't remember the name of the argument. I couldn't remember what button to push on that microwave. And this is telling me what it is. So by default, it plots points. But what I want to do is I want to do both. So I want to connect the dots with lines. So to do that, I can go, uh, oh, type equal, ah, equals B for both. And if I run that, look at that, it connected the dots and our plot is looking almost pretty now. Now it turns out that when we get into talking about the Pfeiffer package and the flex plot function, uh, plotting, we're actually not gonna use R's native plot function because it's um, not as pretty and not as functional as the ggplot function, which is what flexplot is referencing. So we'll get back to that later. But anyway, the big point of this video is just to show you what a function is and also kind of reemphasize what an object is in R and how you can modify the arguments for a function to produce a desired result. So we'll see you next time.